Good morning, Kansas City. Welcome to another episode of KCPS Homeroom. We're here on Real World Friday. I have another wonderful opportunity, as I have been over the last few weeks and even months now, to interview people I may have known way back there in their high school lives and ask them this question. What has been going on since high school? And so the premise of this show, Life After KCPS, is kind of featuring a person or two here and there a week. And we're revisiting that exact question. So today I'm joined by an awesome person, person you might notice is surrounded by musical equipment. And how I first knew and experienced this uh, man was in our shows at Paseo Academy, where I used to work myself. So let's wind back to those days and uh, welcome Brandon Butler to our show this morning. And Brandon, will you wind us back to kind of what was going on with you as you were experiencing the end of your high school career at Paseo, and uh, you were involved in music then. I think you're involved in music now. So help us know kind of what was going on right after you uh, finished high school. Right after I finished high school, I was stuck in this little, in limbo almost, because I wanted to go to college afterwards for music performance, but the requirement to go to college for music performance was way higher than what I expected to be. It required you to have so much dedication specifically to one instrument or one lane. So I went for general education and just was trying to figure it out a little bit for a little while, still taking gigs from music and all of that afterwards. And then uh, went to two different colleges actually, and then just decided like, hey, you know, I'm already doing this professionally. Uh, I just want to get out there and keep doing it. So I did a lot of self-teaching and pretty much took off from there with it. stayed in the music industry uh, dominantly and then kind of branched off from there. But that's where I was right after high school, trying to figure out where my lane was as it went towards uh, education in my career. Wow, thank you for that. And I, I remember early days, we had a show called Coffee House and you're, you're probably mm -hmm. gravitating to piano some, right? I'm mm -hmm. not making that up. I can picture you behind a piano and, and oh, yes. sing, singing. And then so, you're you're get a drum set behind you. Are you multi instrument man? Is this kind of uh, is that kind of what you're doing these days? Do you play mostly one instrument, or have you funneled it into a particular area? Uh, I no, I do play multiple instruments. Uh, it started when I started at Sail Academy. Of course, I did start on piano, and then uh, went to cello after that. So I picked both of those up in high school, and then at the end of my senior year, started playing a little bit of bass. So after that, it was kind of like, man, all of these instruments fascinate me. More so rhythm section instruments, just ones that you always see when you're going out to gigs. So uh, I picked up organ and drums a little bit after that and kind of stayed with all of those dominantly. I'll get hired to play piano more than anything else, uh, but I, I love playing bass. Still play cello too, but I love playing bass. Uh, dominantly though, I will keys is what everybody wants nowadays. That's really cool. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was remembering and guessing and, and kind of knowing about you. Um, you're also one of these people, I think, that came out in the era where one in, one income seems like a silly thing to try. And I remember mm -hmm. learning when you were a student, it, it seems like, you know, I mean, we darn near seem closer in age all of a sudden, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but then it seems so far. And I remember learning about students who had figured out ways to have multiple revenue streams, like things that people today and their modern sense of earning, like I have one job, I put all I crazy got into that one, but I do have other couple outlets brewing and maybe a few things like publishing or speaking opportunities. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. say I only have this one, but I also see in some generations, it's felt like more intentional. Like, tell me, tell me some of the ways that you have found a way, I guess, to, to produce income over the years, if you don't mind. Right? We talked about this before, so it wouldn't be so weird. And, you know, what, what does that look like over the years? So now leaving high school, it was strictly about music and then trying to find some type of a real job is what, you know, we would try to call it until I realized that, you know, music is a real job. It's just you have to be at a certain level for it to be a full-time job. So I, I did not want to work for somebody else. Like I absolutely did not. But I'm like, well, what can I do? Because I, I'm not making enough money with music. So I thought about it, music is performing, but it's also teaching as well. 
So I got into doing music teaching. We're sticking with music. Later on down the line, I realized, oh, well, you know, I'm booking my own shows. I write my own contracts. Why don't I add that as a service or something that I can provide for other people, not just for music, but just something as a business consultation type of thing. So uh, it took a few years. And of course, I graduated back in 2010. So I had 11 years to think about this. <laughs> and uh, after a while, it was like, OK, things just made sense. Start pulling more things in. Artists always need graphic design. Well, why don't I pull that in, but also offer it to other businesses, other companies, other entrepreneurs. And then uh, just progressing from there, it's it's turned into, I have a company now, Empire One Productions, and it's a full service uh, media and business consultation company. Specifically, I try to target those in the entertainment industry, but I will target other businesses as well as they have their needs in relation to like marketing and graphic design, um, corporate events if they need entertainment and all of that stuff. Um, and then I also do some day trading. It's been a lot of that going on ever since the pandemic first started. But uh, I've been doing it for a little while. I've been studying it for years. Uh, got into it last year, and it kind of skyrocketed off of there to where I was able to maintain my income with that so I could support myself with music. You know, with the pandemic happening, there was no music whatsoever. So I was making no money. So it was like, I have to be sure I can do other things to be able to take care of myself and my daughter. She was born about a year and a half ago. So just making sure I could take care of uh, family and home. And then within that, now I currently serve as uh, a business consultant for the Mountain Plains Minority Supplier Division Council located in Denver. And it's, it's a phenomenal role to have. You get to meet so many minority business enterprises and uh, corporate members that are interested in working with minority business enterprises. Um, and I do, I handle most of their business communications and graphic design, but that has nothing to do with music whatsoever. You know, so it's as far as creating that additional income, it's like, you know, and mind you, everyone, I don't have a college degree. I do not have a college degree. I went to school. I tried school. I could, I just personally could not do it. Not saying that you shouldn't do it, but I don't have a college degree. Uh, but still being able to create that experience to where I can still make the money that I need to make to take care of myself, to be able to provide savings and take care of my family, all of that very much important. So my, my mission is to strive to make sure I'm not struggling. And if that means I have to do something outside of music to accomplish that, but it still kind of ties into everything all at once, absolutely. So that's that's kind of what I do. And I'll always find little ways to, you know, I'll do consultations here. I might do small speaking engagements somewhere like that, just to bring in some additional side income hustling just a little bit. But you no, know, it's, it's it's almost a need now if you're trying to go into any industry to have a second form of income. That's that's kind of the way now. And and no reason not to really in the way that you can have more than one thing going on in a 24 hour clock and really, really figure that out. So that that's fantastic. I appreciate you so much for saying that about not having a college path, because, again, doing this show is part of showing different paths that do exist, not this one particular uh, decision that we all have made or this one particular way kind of a single story if you've listened to topics like that that one situation can't speak for every other one and that there's going to be so many different variations in people's lives as they get older so the I and I, I do think going into debt and being in college is a tremendous challenge that a couple generations in a row didn't question as much um, and then went into some pretty pretty tremendous debt and I think that's probably part of what their lives are like is getting out from under that again. So um, if you're listening to all that and processing that as young people or not so young people who are watching in Kansas City, that's real stuff. And that's what we're talking about on Real World Friday. Our guest is a fantastic person, Brandon Butler. Tell me about your shirt, because I know, you know, you may be a little more humble than you. Um, you know, some I've known you to be humble over the years, I think, in just my limited time knowing you. But I think mm -hmm. the shirt speaks to kind of you and your career also just as a, yourself, right? Like an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mean just. That's a bad word to throw in front of just artist. But like yourself, your your own gig, your 100 percent soloist. I would assume there's no one else in that product with you. Um mm -hmm. What, what's going on there? You've got some music out there and some things that we could go and find or look up. 
Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I, um, if you go to my website, the soloistkc.com, you'll see a, uh, one of my music videos and some songs, all appropriate, everything's appropriate. I try to make sure that the music I produce is something that everybody can listen to. So uh, that's one thing I strive for. But I came up with this after actually watching the movie, The Soloist. I'm not sure if you remember with uh, Jamie Foxx, I believe that's who was in the movie. But I watched the movie, he was playing cello, and it, it, it was just... It was like, wow, okay, another black man playing cello in a movie. Mind you, it's just a movie, but at the time that I watched it, I believe I was still in high school. So it was just like, wow, that stuck with me. So about three or four years ago, um, I picked up what's called the talk box, and I, I should have brought it so I could uh, imitate it a little bit. But if you know some old school music like Roger Troutman, uh, I Want to Be Your Man, or even new school music, uh, Bruno Mars, he put out 24 karat magic at the very beginning. They use something called a talk box. And that's that's primarily what I do. I'm a talk box artist. So um, I will I create all my songs with that synthesized type of voice uh, or the type of vocal box. And it's it's pretty cool. I usually use it in more upbeat situations with that. So but among that. Um, I brand myself as the soloist because I'm capable of doing a lot of things musically by myself between producing music, uh, producing concepts for people, and then my own music. I don't have to utilize other musicians to do what I'm doing, but I choose to if I want to, but I, I just, I do everything by myself. And then it's a, a pillar of uh, kind of where I stand. Most of my companies that I have created between Empire One Productions um, the on the one band, a lot of them have that one or that solo type thing embedded in the name. It, it gives it a resonance of, well, this is mine. This can be done with just me, but I'm branching out to try to work with whoever I can work with. But at the end of the day, it comes back to one. Everything comes back to one thing, one unified thing. So the soloist, that's just the leg of my artistry. I do some traveling between the West Coast, I mean, New Zealand. Oh, that was amazing. New Zealand was amazing. Uh, Hawaii, been there several times. And uh, a lot of that is island reggae music that I'll do. But nonetheless, I mean, I can talk all day about all of that stuff. But it's, it's, it's a reflection of myself outside of my what people see on a day-to-day. -day. My artistry, completely different than my personality on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Boy, so I was guessing, you know, looking back on on our time, I was thinking, you know, every time I was around Brandon Butler, it made me feel like I should work a little harder. And I was like, I wonder what point in the interview I'll have that sense again, because I think it still has that effect on me. And that's kind of what I was bringing up back about the revenue streams and the the, the just the constant goal setting and re goal setting. And, you know, I, I think you're just full of great things to offer um, and you're doing it at such a wonderful level. I'm so excited for you. Tell the young people who might be out there that are 17, 18 years old and looking out at this planet and this world today and wondering their path or where, you know, where they're going to go that might feel the same. Because I think what I'm noticing, I, I'm excited as heck for you and can feel that perhaps you're excited to be where you are also and feel warranted in all of your effort and perhaps, you know, your continued pursuit, that, that that's the coolest thing to talk to someone and find out about them. What would you tell a young person who might need to know something right now? Yeah. Uh, one of the first things I would tell them is, I, I mean, school is necessary as far as finishing high school, all of that, the fundamentals are definitely necessary. But make sure, you know, if you're going to choose to go to college, don't rush and try to go for something that you do not understand. Don't, don't feel like you get pressured to go and all of that stuff. Uh, I didn't feel pressured to go to college. I just felt like I needed to be doing something. I didn't know what it was, though. Figure out what it is that you want to do or try to early on. You know, ask questions earlier uh, than later. Don't wait until you're halfway through college and you decide, well, actually, this is what I've wanted to do all of my life. Let me do this instead. And now you, you have a huge bill to pay as well. But then along with that, you're still trying to figure out how to make it uh, as an entrepreneur. Now, this is just speaking from an entrepreneur or an entertainment standpoint, when it comes to uh, music performance, education, music education is vital, not just uh, how to do what you're doing, but the business behind it. I wasted maybe two years when I first became a professional musician, 
trying to figure this stuff out and learning along the way. I lost a lot of money. I had some opportunities. People, you know, jumped ship and didn't want to pay and, and some of those things. That stuff is important. And it's not just for music. You know, this relates to any form of entrepreneurship that you go to. Um, and some people, you know, they don't want to be entrepreneurs. They want to specifically work in a field to further their career. That's great. Just make sure you're putting in the time and dedication uh, for all of that. Because it, it takes time, it takes studying, it takes consistency. And the last thing, and this is what I kind of struggled with earlier on in my early adult years was procrastination. It is easy to procrastinate. It's easy to get really comfortable uh, where you're at, especially if you're you're on a good stride for a while. You're like, oh, I'll take a little bit of a break here or I'll, I'll relax a little bit. I can get to that later. Do it now. Whatever it is that you're going to do, go ahead and do it now because the moment that you get relaxed is the moment that, I mean, you could have the next big idea and you could take 10 minutes to relax that you don't need to take and all of a sudden somebody else has already got that idea and they're rolling with it. Entrepreneurship is usually about who gets to it first and then how people are going to follow the trend in their own unique ways. So just make sure you're striving for what you want to do. Stay committed, stay consistent, and make it through high school. College is not mandatory. And I know that's something that people don't like to hear when it's teachers and all of that. It's not mandatory, but it is a good option. It is still a good option. Most of my friends have been to college. They have their degrees and they have their respective fields. That is great for them. It didn't personally work for me, but I made a career out of what I knew how to do. So as long as you are staying consistent with the education and uh, with what it is that you're trying to pursue, you're going to be successful. Fantastic. All right, Kansas City, you heard it here. We've been joined by Brandon Butler, a fantastic man and student I used to know. Um, and we're just joyed to hear your experience and, and again, kind of some of what you've been doing that I know you were dipping yourself in early on. It feels so exciting and powerful to know that, you know, that's still every day part of your life. And I can remember to watch you discovering it there on stage. Uh, and I knew you were discovering it before we ever met because we could tell, you know, but I also just remember being honored and knowing kind of in some of these moments when we were there in the moment in theater productions that this isn't it for a lot of people, that this is going to catch that somehow, you know, there will be an audience much later uh, down the road that, uh, so, hey, I'm ready to start going to see some stuff. This, these walls are going to start opening up. I'm starting to realize like I could go see a lot of people. Jay Soul is at the Phoenix tonight. I talked to her the other day on one of these interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to talk to Carlton about his uh, song that has come out. Right. And man, oh, just, yeah. it's getting cooler and cooler. The, there's things to go do where I might really have a really awesome chance to be in the audience and know a really special person. So I'll actually uh, be with Jay Soul at the Phoenix as well. So you no okay, you'll catch both of us. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I'll make sure I say hi. If I come out, it's not mm -hmm. going to be for a little while till uh, my significant other is fully vaccinated and she's close. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're ready to go out and explore and ex experience what we've all been missing so much. So as, yeah. as someone who loves performers and loves what, you know, you do for the world, I'll just thank you personally and say, I know it's been like the hardest time in the world to lose all that. I have a friend who sets up shows and I've watched his industry basically disappear and, you know, just how frustrated it, it must feel to have to deal with rules and laws and precautions and things that really just interrupt everything that we all want. Uh, and we want those performers to be rewarded and be able to continue to do what they, you know, uh, deserve to do with their their skills and talents. So thank you for that, sir. And uh, to all the performers out there watching and KC and everywhere else, thank you for keeping it going. And we're coming back to watch as soon as we can. Uh, it's been a wonderful Friday morning here on KCPS Homeroom. Thanks again to Brandon Butler for spending a little time with us. Wisdom galore and uh, definitely a person who shows what he's talking about. So thank you so much, sir, for being here this morning and we're signing off. Have a great day, Kansas City.